All right, welcome back. It's still um, the Breakfast Battle 2023 special right here on Plus TV Africa. I'm still here. My name is Kofi Bartels alongside Messi Bubu, who is still here as well. And uh, we're having very interesting conversations about uh, the election, 2023 election, and of course the unfolding events. Uh, counting is still ongoing. Um, some states have um, been uh, completed in terms of the results being returned to the National Coalition Center. Some states are still on. Uh, and uh, the remainder of the votes are expected today. And I'm sure that by the end of um, today, we should know who the next president of the Federal Republic of uh, Nigeria um, is. And we would like to uh, also introduce our next guest to talk about, you know, the alleged inconsistencies in the number of voting votes and uh, allegations of overvoting in Ekiti State. And also to talk about generally uh, some of the complaints regarding the general election we have a studio uh, guest in studio i'd like to say a very good morning i think he's usually on zoom uh from uh the beautiful um uh, asian country of singapore but he's here with us in studio this morning uh, uh dr omoshala deji is a political scientist um dr deji good morning to you good morning thank you for having me all right right it's good to have you back here um you, you, i'm sure you came because of the elections um, and uh, i would like to take your thoughts uh, compared to what happens around the world, um, places that you've observed. Um, still with us via Zoom, we have um, uh, uh, the uh, coordinator of the People's Advocate, Advocate and Civil Society Organization that fights for the rights of the peoples. He was also um, an election observer with the Transition Monitoring Group, uh, Courage and Sirimovu Esquire, legal practitioner. Uh, Courage, uh, just to confirm you're still there with us. Thank you, Kofi. I'm still here. Okay, fantastic. Um, um, Dr. Moshala Deji, your thoughts, your observation um, uh, as a returnee um, on what transpired on Saturday? Well, I think the Saturday election against questions our ability to do things right. There's an improvement from the past election because in 2011, 2015, and 2019, INEC, for one reason or the other, postponed the election. Many citizens were kind of like apprehensive that maybe that is going to occur again. I never got that right by not postponing the election. Everything was kind of going smoothly, especially in the metropolis and the constituencies of the leading candidates. You can see uh, in Adamawa, in Lagos, the constituencies close to that of the leading, uh, to that of the leading presidential candidate. The process started early. But that is not the case across the country. Now, the, the, the election, as it went, there is an improvement with the, with the introduction of Beavers. So I would say that INEC started well. But at the middle of the game, things began to go wrong. And most especially, failure to upload the result as promised by INEC for citizens to be seeing the result real time. That as reduce confidence in the process itself. So I think that INEC started well, but at the middle of the game, it, uh, things went wrong and it, it, it's not ending gloriously for INEC. Mm. But ca ca can the electoral umpire really be blamed in all of what's happening, especially if you look at um, some of the challenges with technology, um, network failure, network challenges? You know, can the electoral umpire be, be blamed? You know, it, it's, it's beyond them if the network is not working and um, results cannot be uploaded to the portal. And there are fail-safes. Um, the uh, regulations and guidelines for the cutoff of election allows them to, to you know, resort to using the, uh, the copies of uh, the uh, result sheets and the forms you know, which contain the, 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 the voting uh, tally. Well, I think it has more to do with the will of women to make things work. Technology, you can't speak to someone automatically on your phone, you have to take it, you have to dial a number, or even if you're going to use a voice prompt or something. Now, if human beings do not want to make it work, it won't work. That's what I see in this case, because even if there are some technical itches or the other, those technical itches could be fixed within a short period of time. This is an election whereby, unlike what we've seen in Nigeria before, that the major candidate will be from the ethnic tripods on which Nigeria stands. In such a situation, transparency is important. This is an election that involves largely the youth, that the youth are passionate about. 
So based on that, you, you have to be 100% transparent as much as you can. But if you are saying, oh, the, the technology and all that, then I think the, the system, just like our phone, if there's no good internet network on my phone, if I send a WhatsApp message to you, over time it will still deliver. So I blame it more on the will of human beings to do what is right rather than on the technology itself. Even if you bring the best technology, even if you bring a super human being, if they don't want it to work, it won't work. That's the problem. It's, it's, it's an institutional thing. It's a system thing in the sense that those that profit from it, for example, politics is very lucrative here. And why, why would a politician not go all out to make sure that he or she wins. He has everything to gain all the horse it wins. Nigeria is a power-driven society. So technology or anything, there's bound to be compromised, except if the umpire himself is willing and committed to make things work. There should be like, um, like um, other substitute engineers, for example, you know, in, in the sense that if you, you don't put all your eggs in one basket, knowing that this is a crucial election. So for me, I think INEC has not, has, not, has, not, has not done the right thing, not because it is not capable to, but because INEC is not willing to. That is how I see it. Because now, we have spent over 300 billion naira for this election. And my pain is that at the end of the day, this process, building of ballot box, queuing at the, at the polling unit, counting of votes, transmission of his own manually, at the end of the day, what we will have will be some form of judicacy. The election would, from, from, the, from what we are seeing, will eventually be decided by fifth, about 15 people, 15 judges, subjecting the will of 200 million people to 15 people in a system whereby when they read the home of the judges, they found the humongous amount of it. If you want to know how efficient a particular sector of a country is, look at the educational system. The educational system is in, is in comatose. Look at the health system. Look at every other sector. If those sectors are in a terrible state, don't expect that the judicial system will be one, you know, um, super place. Oh. No. So in that kind of system, you now subject the will of 200 million people to a judiciary that is alleged as corrupt. Okay. So we, we, we had raised question as to whether the uh, the country's internet infrastructure is capable, there's a capacity to transmit the data because it was also, there was also a report that said we, we necessarily didn't need the beavers in terms of accreditation, so the network was not necessary. But you know, the challenge right here is as to transmission of results. And at the time where there are several reports uh, um, and evidence to that fact, even you know, on social media, as to thugs uh, truncating the process, harassing polling unit um, agents, as to don't upload the results. But there were several, you know, conversations as to not having, you know, the necessary internet infrastructure to upload these results. So, the question is, do you think that we knew that we were, we had a lacuna in this, you know, in this area of internet infrastructure? And if we didn't know or we knew, um, do you think that we probably could have addressed it? Were we too very confident that we had what it takes to transmit? What exactly are we dealing with? Is it that people did not allow the polling agents to transmit this result? Or was it just that the network automatically didn't respond? Yeah, I think the people from all walks of life, people at INEC, people at the polling unit, people, the, the talks that didn't want the election to be transmitted electronically are working for some people who, who want power. So if those talks are well-oriented, if they know the essence of having good people in governance, definitely they won't do it. They, they would think that maybe this person's character is contributing to, to making me a talk. You know? So I think it, it, is a, it is an human thing. Then the Beaver system, I think it uses what I can call um, a soft technology in the sense that it should have been done if you are producing a beaver system for a developing country where the internet is strong, I would assume that the beavers will be able to work with 2G network, 
3G network, not 5G high speed internet. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, so, so, but this question of, uh, of Beavers and, of course, uh, the role of the, the judiciary, I would like to bring in uh, a courage in serial removal before we introduce our next uh, guest who has joined us via Zoom. Courage, um, the, the uh, you know, uh, DG has raised a point, you know, talk about technology and, and all that. Uh, but he's also talked about the judiciary. I would like you to talk about both, both of them. Start with technology. Um, I'm always going to ask, I'm always going to ask, if you use Beavers, okay? I have my phone here, device. If you use Beavers, everybody use the Beavers to accredit uh, to, uh, and to validate the voters to look at who is eligible and who is not eligible, okay? Highly successful. I think we can say more than 90% success rate. On the same day, after the voting was concluded, they're having problems taking the result to the portal, which is just to snap it. Snap, snap. Just take a picture and send it. And I mean, you can even take the device and if the dealing wasn't uploaded, you can look at it. I'm sure it's like a, you can, a tablet. You can, okay, let's go to the gallery and see what was snapped. It's, the record should still be there. And it, I'm sure it can still be uploaded. Um, so what do you say to that? I mean, because I, I think it's, for me, it's just a, a flimsy excuse, really. Um, even if it takes 48 hours, which has been okay. taken. So that's number one. Number two. Um, the, 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 go, the, the alternative of going to the court now for like cases like Ekiti, we're seeing where, um, you know, there are complaints. Just, just go to prepare your, your petition for the tribunal stage and then head there instead of making all this noise like the normal is making. So speak to those two things, please. Thank you. Um, first of all, you know, out, you know, You know, you were talking about us providing you real evidence. And I know that um, very soon you will join your colleague, Shimu, and, you know, join us in the legal profession. I know that's been very soon. You will not know the in those sections clearly. You know, Kofi, there is something that is called circumstantial evidence. And circumstantial evidence is also admissible in law. Now, if we had told you that we were on ground and we saw um, officials of government, we saw talks working for the government, we saw uh, presiding officers dancing to the tune of government and not declaring results. You know, that, of course, is, you know, evidence that we have. And even if you say, okay, these evidence are circumstantial, Admissible and to a whole extent goes a long way to prove the assertions that we are making that you know there is that you know disruption of the electoral process and there is that collusion to subvert the will of the people. I also said in some polling units, we had polling units where um the thoughts came there mandated. You know, people that, that they must vote for the um, governor's candidates. They must vote for the governor's candidates. And that erupted crisis in Monel Ward 7 in River State. And again, in circumstances like that, we expect INEC to either cancel such candidates or call for the election. But that was not done. So when we are making these allegations, we are making them based on the circumstances on ground so that you don't throw away everything I've said um, this morning. So that's on the one hand. On another hand, the beavers. You and I know that just the way we have our phone, even if I'm not a technological expert, but there are some things a reasonable man will know. If I snap from E8, and whether offline or online, I send it over a period of time, it will be delivered. So I don't think Beavers is, you know, um, such a weak machine that if E8 is snapped and pushed out, it won't get to um, the server. So 
there is that suspicion, you know, that, you know, something is fishy, something is wrong. And INEC must come and explain to the people, because you are told the people, and you've written it in your guidelines, that this is how the election should go. You've raised the expectations of the people, and we come to the ballots, and what we have is something different. It's worrisome, and we have to question INEC. INEC has failed us. I agree with your um, guest in the studio, because, you know, sovereignty belongs to the people, but given the scenario of failure, failure of INEC, we may have, you know, um, to resort to um, the courtroom for a few persons. It will now be like an electoral college where a few persons, you know, justices will now decide the fate of, you know, Nigerians one way or another instead of the popular will of the people to prevail just because of the failure of INEC. And we must emphasize that billions of taxpayers' money have been spent to get these things right. Did they not get it right in Plateau? Coach. Did they not get it right in Oshun? So when we have this scenario in this election. So, I mean, let's get back to the studio now. Courage. Uh, I mean, we still have Deji okay. here. So, uh, we'll come to Deji now. We, we have a... Um, um, on Zoom as well. We we'll, we'll definitely join uh, with him in no uh, time. Advocacy manager of Malala Fund Nigeria. But just quickly before we connect with you know Femi right here, uh, Deji, you're here. Now, one of the issues, the reason why the beavers were introduced, and which I think is a factor that is responsible for the voter turnout and the engagement of Nigerians, uh, the introduction of the you know the beavers uh, via the Electoral Act, and the fact that you have the IRF where this result will be transmitted electronically. So I want you to speak to the issue because there's been a lot of concerns that are raised as to the results not being uploaded up until now. The results were supposed to be uploaded at the polling unit. And the reason for this, the reason why we have this technology introduced was to take care of the integrity of our electoral process, transparency, because we feel that for every other time you have the manual process is doctored. Uh, the, the, the result sheet is manipulated. People, if you have real time as, as it's going on and everyone is watching, they are seeing you uploaded, there's no time for all of that. So I, I want you to speak to you know this particular issue because um, it feels like there are a lot of concerns are saying, oh, we're not uploading the results uh, up until now. We can't see the results. Are the results supposed to be, were we supposed to be talking about the results uploaded two days after the elections, or almost getting to three days? Well, um, I pray we don't go back to um, an era whereby if you want to send a message to me on WhatsApp now, it has to travel for like two, five days. <laughs> I pray we don't go back to that era. Then another thing is, <laughs> another thing is, if we are to um, use, if the percentage of people that were not able to successfully upload it via vivas is shorter than the percentage that successfully uploaded it that's not sabotage but what we have now it's an intentional sabotage against the system and i think there should be serious consequence for actions if this is what i made promised was technology first then manually but what we have now is technology right off just manually this is not what INEC promised. The credibility of the process. Election is a big deal. Election in any third world or developing country is a serious issue. In any state or government whereby we play the winner takes it all system, where citizens look up to government for the basics, where the institution is not so strong. The person you have in power matters a whole lot. So for anybody to think they can sabotage the system and go scot free, for example, the woman whose picture has gone viral that was blooded, what has happened to the person, to, to those people that attacked the woman till today? Nothing. Mm -hmm. You see series of manipulation of results. What has happened to the people that made that happen? Nothing. 
So tell me now, what will discourage people from the system, from, from, not, from not doing the same thing when the governorship election is being held? You have failed to upload the result as promised. Nobody has been brought to book. At the end of the day, this is what we're still going to have during the governorship election. And this transmits to what um, to, to the effectiveness in office because if you know that only if you, you if you get to the office credibly that is when you can win re-election definitely you will go on out to perform and honestly the president has tried he's not a superhuman being he cannot be everywhere he has tried as regards all this vote buying but nigerian politicians are very smart as you are copying it from one angle, they are coming up with another form of Mapatis or the other from another angle. So this issue of not using the beaver system is not something that we should, we should tolerate at all. We saw it in Hineke where the, the results were uploaded real time. So I want a system whereby after the election, we will have less litigation. The judiciary are not superhuman beings. Then this thing itself is affecting the judicial system itself because from now that the election has end to almost a year, it, we, you'll be having election one election cases or the other at the court. What happened to people that have family dispute, land dispute, child custody, different kind of issues? So the political space has flooded the judicial space. And by so doing, you can't get justice where you have real, sincere issues, non-political issues. How long do we want to do that? If this is the kind of system that we want, that virtual, if you conduct hundred elections at the maybe uh, presidential, okay. legislative, okay. and mm -hmm. state um, assembly, if let's say it is hundred, if we have a system whereby ninety-five percent or ninety percent will be resolved by the court. Let us save ourselves money right. and stress. Okay. Take the CV of these people. To the Take it to the <laughs> court. Look at them. Okay. We invite them for an interview. Who right. is most qualified? Okay. Because at the end of the day, you have to go. Have, you have, you have, 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 let me bring in Femi Adewi of Balala Fund. Femi, uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Uh, it's really a heated one. Uh, what to me, I dare you, I, 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 or Lawale, I, I, I apologize for that. What to me, Lawale. Um, um, what, are, what are your thoughts on what, what our guests have been saying so far? Well, th thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to join the show. I, I think that I see failure on many levels. Uh, first, I, I must acknowledge, and I agree with uh, all the panelists who have said that INEC terribly overpromised and grossly under-delivered in this election. Nobody forced INEC to promise us that beavers would upload results from polling units onto a portal, and that all Nigerians would be able to access that portal and see. And for all Nigerians, that promise is to for INEC to say we are going to be transparent with this electoral process and we are going to raise the bar beyond what we have seen in previous elections. And they have run a pilot. There was a pilot test in Oshon. We saw it. It didn't work perfectly, but Nigerians were excited at the prospect of having this done nationally. And I think that uh, from any objective analysis of what we have seen in this, on Saturday's election, it was, it was shambolic in terms of the Biba system of prison. And I, and I think the failure is across many levels, and I'll try to analyze it. One is the fact that we're deploying largely core members as ad hoc staff across the nation, over 176,000 polling units. Many of them are interacting with the tab for the first time. Many of them have not been taught with computers in their schools. And so the learning curve for them to understand that machine uh, is, is something that you, you must you must deal with. I have, I have a number of polling units where friends who are technologically inclined have to step up to the core members and say, if this machine is not working, let's see and let's help you troubleshoot it. And they discover that they were facing just very minor issues. Uh, the app is not loading, just shut down the app and restart it, and the issues are fixed. And so on some levels, I feel that the, some of the issues are not deliberate sabotage, but they have given uh, very sophisticated gadgets to young people who are interacting with them for, for, the, for the first time outside of a training environment. That, that's one. I think secondly, there was also deliberate attempt. We've seen different beavers results uploaded 
um, that people have taken at the polling unit, people were at the polling unit, took pictures of the or, or original result announced. And then when they are seeing beavers on the platform of the INEC, they are seeing all altered result sheets. And I think that is an embarrassment to INEC. I, I personally feel INEC does not want us to see the beavers they have uploaded on their system because it will be an embarrassment to the nation and to INEC itself, because that is a deliberate attempt to thwart electoral process in many parts of Nigeria. In Lagos, we've seen different examples and different parts of Nigeria. And I don't think this was done by one political party. I think it was done by many political parties trying to influence the electoral process one way or the other. And for this to happen at such a widespread level, it shows that INEC is not prepared uh, to run an election of this size and in this manner and with the amounts that we have invested in this election. Thirdly, I think the, 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 the importance of education now comes to play. If our people are not educated, and, and, and as you can see, many of the results that we now have evidence online are coming from our band centers. We need to therefore ensure that people in our rural areas are educated, they know how to defend their votes, they do not resort to violence when they feel that they are they have been disenfranchised, but that they can collect evidence that will be useful uh, to political parties and to actors in court in order to ensure that uh, people who have been disenfranchised can claim their victory. I mean, we're being told to, you know, call this up in no time. We're just going to move away. But I'd like to ask you, for the point that you have raised, the issue of education and violence, as it were, uh, you say that people need to be able to understand that, uh, accept the result as it were, and not be involved in violence. But uh, what's, the, what's the ratio, what's the connection with Thugly, because that's what we saw. We saw people um, coming out, having guns, and being very violent, and uh, you know, doing all sorts of things, snatching the ballot boxes, threatening people, um, you know, attacking them in different spot, uh, in different spaces. However, you want to put it. So I, I like to know where the role of education lies here. Is it necessarily education, or is the fact that you know these persons have been recruited by these politicians for their own selfish gain? I mean, it's not rocket science. When you have a country where we have one of the highest levels of out-of-school children in the world, uh, estimates, official estimates put it at about 10 million. Uh, people have said that estimate is even grossly underestimated. On a, on, uh, on out of school children in Nigeria is way higher than that. But let's say 10 million people. You have a, a country where unemployment is double digit, over 20 percent, and you have a country where poverty is double digit, over 30 percent, and a population of 200 million. What that means is that you have a pool of young people who have not been to school, who do not have a job, and who are debt poor. It means that if you give me probably 20 million today, I can mobilize an army because by offering people 1,000, in fact, today now that there's no Naira, if I offer people 1,000 Naira cash, I can build an army of 2,000 people and say, go, go and destroy things. They are jobless, they are not educated, they are poor. When you have such a sizable number, and if you look at estimate, yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry, we, we, have, we have to go. I'm, 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 sincerely, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry we have to pull the plugs at this point, my brother. I'm sorry uh, because of, of time we have to take our next program. Um, but the importance of education cannot be overemphasized. And we look forward to having you on subsequent programs on this station to talk about this. Um, but I'd just like to put it to um, our learned uh, guest uh, tonight, uh, this morning, Courage and Sri Movo, um, that, of course, you look at uh, Section 135 sub 1 uh, that provides that the guilt of an accused should be proved beyond reasonable doubt. That was said in Jigede versus State. Okay, uh, no suspicion or probability. Um, I know I'm not, <laughs> I've not gone to law school. I don't need to go to law school. We cannot conduct a trial by media on the basis of um, uh, uh, what you call circumstantial evidence because I don't have the capability, capacity as a judge to prove or to, uh, to, um, to judge that matter. You have to take your circumstantial evidence to court. Now, we here, we have our, our media rules that require that before we, 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 we are found guilty of slander, um, you know, or libel. We have to, we have to, you know, we have set checks and balances. So this is not a court. If you have your circumstantial evidence, my brother, take it to court and prove that you, yes, Rubike did what you said he did. Thank you very much. We have to go. Um, and that's the size of our package. Mercy. Oh, of course. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate you. And of course, we look forward to having you 
uh, be part of the programming as we proceed. Hopefully, we probably might not come back to the election studios. Uh, the pro yes. that we might have the uh, result. I mean, if we have the we, result, we hope so. We hope uh, so. If we do have the result today or later today, then uh, we would move on to subsequent programming. But Absolutely. if not, we, we, we have, have you, yes. uh, you know, to come through for us. Thank you once again, Deji. Thank you, Femi, and uh, thank you, Courage. All right, we have to go. Thank you so much. Um, we'll talk on the other side, Courage. I appreciate your time. Good night.